Welcome. We're moving on now to Section 3 of the presentation, New Options in the Treatment of Negative and Cognitive Symptoms of Schizophrenia. We've already discussed the negative and cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia, as well as the NMDA receptor with its dual activating neurotransmitters, glycine and glutamate. And we're moving on now to discuss sarcosine, which is a natural glycine transporter type 1 inhibitor. It should be known at the start that sarcosine has been shown in research to noticeably improve the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. And it is felt that these effects are likely due to its actions as a glycine transport type 1 inhibitor. The benefits seen with sarcosine may be especially large regarding speech quality and fluency and emotional range exhibited by patients with schizophrenia. And the nutrient was well tolerated and effective in research. The research effects were assessed with the schedule for assessment for negative symptoms of the SANS, as well as the positive and negative syndrome scale, or the PANS, which are common research tools used in schizophrenia research. Sarcosine is actually a natural molecule. It's a naturally occurring glycine transporter type 1 inhibitor that blocks the reuptake of glycine in the synapse and in the extracellular space between neurons. It increases glycine availability, hopefully, to safely activate NMD receptors in this fashion. But sarcosine also breaks down into glycine after the terminal methyl group is removed through natural metabolism. And this probably further increases concentrations of this amino acid for NMD receptor activation. Sarcosine is a natural molecule found in our bodies with a byproduct of glycine and choline metabolism, and there are small concentrations in the food we eat. It's already considered to be a safe food additive, and it's in many common household products. It's non-toxic, even, even in high concentrations, as evidenced by people with high sarcosine levels in their blood due to metabolic errors. And in the research with sarcosine in the treatment of schizophrenia, there were no significant side effects noted. It should be known at the front that sarcosine was not shown to be effective when added to clozapine in patients with schizophrenia. While there were no reported adverse outcomes, sarcosine did not improve symptoms. And this is not surprising because clozapine has been shown in previous research to erase the benefits of glycine site related NMDA treatments in schizophrenia. This may be due to a metabolite in clozapine. We're not sure at this point, but there may be a metabolite that already affects the glycine site or affects reuptake of glycine. And this effect is considered by many to contribute to clozapine's renowned efficacy in schizophrenia, being known as the most effective neuroleptic treatment option that we have currently available. The first study I want to discuss is by Lane and others and was in the Archives of General Psychiatry in 2005. The study is titled Sarcosine or D serine add-on treatment for acute exacerbation of schizophrenia. And this group compared sarcosine to both placebo and D-serine added to risperidone in patients with acute exacerbation of schizophrenia. D-serine was already shown to be effective in some studies added on to neuroleptics for schizophrenia and it was used as an active treatment. And of course, placebo was used as the inactive treatment comparator. The study was six weeks with 65 inpatients. It was double-blinded and placebo-controlled. Regarding outcomes, I'm going to go over the outcomes more specifically in the next couple of slides. But it was clear in this study that sarcosine added to risperidone significantly reduced symptom severity in many different arenas compared to risperidone plus placebo. These serine strangely, was not effective in this study, uh, and there were no significant side effects shown. Generally, again, I'll go over more specific details regarding the numbers uh, associated with improvements in this study, but looking at this graph, one can see that compared to placebo, sarcosine showed significant increases in symptom improvement across the board, looking at negative symptoms, affective symptoms or emotional symptoms, verbal symptoms, cognitive symptoms, and depressive symptoms. 
as well. Going over these symptom categories more specifically, uh, in the general negative symptom category, symptoms improved by 26%, and this represented 1.8 times the improvement seen with risperidone when placebo was added. This was assessed with the SAN-17, a subset of the original SANS that was designed to conform with current definitions of negative symptoms. Very large effects were seen in affective uh, emotional range and the speech subscales, and these are presented in greater detail on the next slide. The other symptom subscales included apathy or abolition, which includes poor grooming, hygiene, low physical energy, and giving up at work or at school, and the anhedonia asociality subscale, which assesses decreased interests in activities, feelings of decreased feelings of intimacy and decreased sexual interest, and poor relationships. Within the negative symptom subscale, affect and emotional range improved by 36%, which represented over 3.5 times the improvement seen with risperidone when placebo was added. This specific subscale assessed aspects of schizophrenia, including unchanging facial expression, decreased expressive gestures, decreased emotional response, decreased spontaneous movements, poor eye contact, and lack of vocal inflection or range of tone. Within the verbal or speech subset, subscale of the SAN-17, sometimes called alogia, symptoms improved by 31%, representing over 2.5 times the improvement with risperidone after placebo was added. This assessed the amount of speech that patients exhibited, blocking of speech, halting during conversation, decreases, in the content of speech and slow response times. Regarding cognitive symptoms assessed through the PAN subscale, improvement at 25% represented 1.3 times the improvement seen with risperidone alone. This assessed poor attention and disorientation, mannerisms and posturing, difficulty in abstract thinking and conceptual disorganization. And then finally, in the depressive symptom category, symptoms improved by 26%, representing 1.6 times the improvement seen with risperidone and placebo. This was measured through the PAN subscale and assessed anxiety, depression, preoccupation, somatic concerns, and guilty feelings. So one can see through this original study in 2005 that sarcosine shows significant promise in the treatment of schizophrenia and specifically uh, as regards the negative symptoms subcategories of this disorder. Second study I'd like to discuss was by Lane and others and was presented in the International Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology in 2010. Study titled The Randomized, a Randomized Double Blind Placebo Controlled Comparison Study of Sarcosine and D Serine Add on Treatment for Schizophrenia. This was in many ways a follow-up study to the previous one, only in this study, patients were stable, and they were also allowed to be on three different neuroleptics instead of risperidone only. Olanzapine, risperidone, and quetiapine were the three neuroleptics that patients uh, were entered in the study on. Um, it's also different in the sense that these patients were stable and were not being admitted to the hospital for acute exacerbation of their symptoms. This was a six-week trial with 60 stable patients. It was placebo controlled and double blinded and outcome met, were met, outcomes were measured on the PANS, SANS, quality of life questionnaire and global assessment of functioning scales. Again, symptom category improvement will, will be discussed in more detail in the next following slides. But as you can see in this graph, compared to placebo, sarcosine was significantly more effective at treating the symptoms of schizophrenia um, across all scales to look at, including the PANS, SANS, quality of life, and the GAF uh, subscales. Within the PANS, the research group saw 16.9% improvement, and that's represented over four times the improvement seen with placebo. 
significant gains were seen in all of the subscales of the PAMs, including positive, negative, cognitive, and depressive symptom subscales. Within scale for assessment of negative symptoms of the SAMs, 18.6% improvement was seen with sarcosine, and this represented over three times the improvement seen with placebo. Significant gains were seen in all of the following subscales, including affect, elogia, apathy, and anhedonia. As you can see, these are many of the negative symptom categories that we see in schizophrenia, and improvement in these categories is a significant issue. Regarding the quality of life questionnaire, 26.4% improvement was seen, representing over three times the improvement seen with placebo. The quality of life questionnaire is a scale filled out directly by patients as to their status and represents their own inner sense of improvement. It is targeted to assess symptoms of social activity, social initiative, and social withdrawal, a patient's sense of purchase, purpose and curiosity, their emotional interaction and capacity for empathy, and as well as their capacity for enjoyment or anhedonia symptoms, aimless activity, motivation. And finally, within the global assessment of functioning scale, 15.7% improvement was seen, representing almost three times the improvement seen with placebo alone. One must remember that the GAS was assessed by the clinicians involved in the study, but that they were blinded, not knowing which treatments the patients were getting. And since a significant improvement was seen in the symptom categories across the board. Finally, with sarcosine, I'd like to discuss a third study by Tsai that was printed in the Journal of Biological Psychiatry in 2004. The study is titled Glycine Transport 1 Inhibitor N-Methylglycine, sarcosine, added to antipsychotics for the treatment of schizophrenia. This study compared reductions in symptoms due to sarcosine versus placebo when added to the antipsychotic regimen of stable outpatients. It was a six-week trial with 38 stable patients. It was double-blinded and placebo-controlled, and outcomes were measured on the same essential scales that were used in the previous studies. Approximately one-third of the patients were using first-generation antipsychotics, and this is important because the previous studies had only looked at adding sarcosine to second generation or atypical antipsychotics. The antipsychotics, the first generation antipsychotics in the study included haloperidol and fluphenazine. Uh, the rest of the patients were on uh, risperidone or sulfuride, which is a second generation antipsychotic commonly used in Europe. Regarding the results, in comparison to placebo, sarcosine was significantly effective at reducing the symptoms in multiple categories when adding to a, added to a patient's current neuroleptic. No significant side effects were seen, and in the researchers' words, since there was no other neurotransmitter site at which sarcosine acts except the known glycine transport 1 site, the effect of sarcosine was likely due to its action on the glycine transport 1. Superior to other NMDA glycine site agents, sarcosine extends its therapeutic effects beyond the core symptoms of schizophrenia. This is a very, very telling statement from a researcher in a field that is notoriously conservative in statements like this. Going over the actual outcomes, again, more specific numbers will be presented on the next slide, but if you look at the slide, you can see clearly that in comparison to placebo, sarcosine was very effective at improving symptoms across the board in different symptom categories on the SANS, PANS, and BPRS symptom schedules. Regarding specifics on the SANS, there was a 14% improvement. On the PANS positive scale, there was a 17% improvement. On the PANS cognitive scale, there was a 13% improvement. PANS general showed 14% improvement. And on the BPRS, which is another research tool for assessment of symptoms, there was 16% improvement. Across the board, significance was highly uh, significant at uh, 
at uh, 0 0.0001 or 0 0.0002 in the case of general symptoms. And again, there were no treatment side effects seen with the use of sarcosine in this study. Finally, the study showing that sarcosine likely does not have benefits when added to clozapine for the treatment of schizophrenia is presented here. There was a six-week trial with 20 patients stable on clozapine. This study was double-blinded and placebo-controlled, and outcomes were measured on the PAMS. And the conclusion of the researchers was that there was no significant difference in response rates between placebo and sarcosine, and that sarcosine is likely ineffective in patients taking clozaril. We've concluded this section on sarcosine, and we'll move on now to the fourth section of this presentation, discussing N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, which is an antioxidant precursor to glutathione. Thank you.